Can we pack any more in this episode? The challenge of feed efficiency, marketing feeder cattle through Ally Genetic Resources, updates on the world-famous Mile City Buck and Horse Sale, plus a great partner like Transova Genetics to help fast-track our program. We've got lots, lots more in addition to that. So, crew, y'all know what's next. Let's ranch it up. Good day, everyone, and thanks for riding with us on this all-new jam-packed episode of the Ranch It Up Radio Show. I'm Jeff Tigger Earhart. A big thank you goes out to our partners, the DLCC Ranch, the world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale, Pharmatan and Imogene Ingredients, the Tri-State Livestock News, the Farmer and Rancher Exchange and the Fence Post, Westway Feed Products, Allied Genetic Resources, LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, the Cowboy Channel, and Wrangler. Cow Country News, you know, the cow stuff. Our top news story, and one that is commanding a lot of attention, two U.S. senators reintroduced a bipartisan bill designed to remove regulatory red tape blocking investment in small and local meat packing operations. The expanding Local Meat Processing Act would amend a Packers and Stockyards Act regulation that prohibits livestock auction markets from owning or operating meat marketing businesses. One says the current regulations are outdated and the rules hinder producers' ability to increase livestock processing capacity. Iowa Senator Joni Ernst says our farmers and producers are ready to fill those market demands, but right now there is so much red tape that stands in the way. She goes on to say that she believes the rule change will lower prices at the meat counter. The Amplifying Processing of Livestock in the United States Act, a bipartisan companion bill, was introduced in the U.S. House. Bull sale report time, and our first recap takes us to Tennessee in the Crazy K Ranch Angus. 54 Angus bulls averaged 63.24 with a top of 24,000. Congratulations. Gartner Angus Ranch out of Ashland, Kansas. 374 bulls came in with an average of 95.01. 100 donor heifers coming in at 98.53 for an average. 156 bred heifers, 55.93. 86 bred cows at 5706, 17 pairs at 7912, 347 commercial bred females, commercial breads at just a tick under 3000 at 2965 and one ranch horse coming in at 26000. Hubert Charlet Ranch out of Monument, Kansas, their 44th annual production sale, 74 bulls at 59.19, six spring pairs at 63.33, eight fall pairs at 53.88, 11 open heifers at 36.14, and one donor female coming in at 20,000. Think Beef Genetics out of Randolph, Kansas, their spring bull and female sale, 34 Angus bulls, an average of 7015, 7015, 73 Charlay bulls at 5935, 6 Charlay and Red Angus crosses at 3250, and then 12 Charlay females at 3958. And wrapping up from Hallettsville, Texas, y'all probably have seen this video on here. These are two to three month bred F1 Brayford females bred to Angus bulls and they sold for 3,300 a head. Yeah, you heard me right. Two to three month bred F1 Brayford females, 3,300 a head in Hallettsville, Texas. Marty Ropp, Allied Genetic Resources, our genetics partner. Questions coming in about marketing feeder cattle, specifically around calves sired by bulls sold through Allied Genetic Resources. That's easy. We we've been we thought about this all the way from the time we started the business, and that was that surely the folks that know more about your genetics, maybe even more about your process and the way that you handle calves and what you've done in the past, have a better chance of getting you a premium for feeder calves than those that don't. And, um, you know, again, if you've been purchasing genetics from people that we work with, um, we're, first of all, we're, we're supportive of what they do because they've got leaning tendencies toward adding value to feeder cattle and their reputations are good. Uh, and then we come in with, with extra knowledge because it's like, listen, we work with these folks every day that provide your genetics. We know what they sell and we've got good, you know, benchmarking information based on lots and lots of experience, even owning some of them. We own 1,500 head a year of customer calves. Um, we can represent those cattle to the larger beef business with more information and more zeal 
uh, than what anybody else can. If you're a, you know, if you're a genetics customer, the Allied Genetic Resources new semen directory, it is out as we speak. Just jump online to AlliedGeneticResources.com. Look them up on Facebook for more information and to get a directory coming your direction. And we're going to be touching on those genetics coming up in the next several episodes. Crew coming up, I go head to head with Jim Jensen with Lucky 7 Angus. We talk feed efficiency plus Transova genetics and how they can springboard your operation into the future. The Ranch It Up Radio Show will be back right after this. The 2023 World Famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale starts May 6th and 7th with horse racing. Also, Mother's Day weekend, May 14th, moms are admitted free. And this year, we've added horse racing May 19th, 20th, and 21st as well. May 18th is a concert with Mitchell Tenpenny at 8.30, Stolen Road, and Copper Mountain Band leading off at 6 p.m. There's bronc riding, mutton busting, wild horse racing, a bronc match, street dance, and more. Online for schedule and tickets, buckinghorsesale.com. South Devon and South Devon Genetics from the DLCC Ranch. Why South Devon? Well, it's real easy. Composites with South Devon, they can bridge the gap between continental and English breeds. Join us in Piers, Minnesota, Saturday, April 15th, for the DLCC Ranch annual production sale featuring South Devon Poundmaker and Navigator cattle. You've heard me talk about it before. It's the largest South Devon offering anywhere. DLCC Ranch. Livestockmarket.com puts you in control when buying or selling commercial livestock, seed stock, or show stock. The easy-to-use online platform at Livestockmarket.com offers private treaty, online auction, and live auction internet bidding. Animals are sold before they ever leave your place. And with Livestockmarket.com, there's no middleman. Buyers connect directly with livestock and hay producers. There's no easier way to find buyers for cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and hay. Sell on your terms today with LivestockMarket.com. Let's get it on. Cattle Battle. The Ranch It Up Radio Show, the most information packed into a 30-minute program that you can find. It's your all things ranching newscast and so glad to be with you. Questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, call or text us at 707-RANCH20. That's 707 707- 726-2420. You can email us, ranchitupshow at gmail.com. And we're all over social media at Ranch It Up Show. Now it's truly a cattle battle. Jim Jensen from Lucky Seven Angus and I have pushed back on one another about his operation, which is one of a kind, by the way. Cattle bred to perform in some of the toughest climates. We have been focusing awfully hard on feed efficiency, the how and the why. Now, Jim. I am not trying to find holes in your outfit, but I am asking those tough questions that others have when we evaluate your program and we evaluate your critters. Now, you and I have been going down this rabbit hole of feed efficiency, and I am sure that some have approached you and said, yeah, but is this a single trait selection? And we know single trait selection can potentially get us into trouble. Well, and they're absolutely right. Single trait selection is horrible. Um, We haven't single trait selected for it, although we've been engaged incredibly. um, We never let our feet go. We never let our structure go. We never let any of the qualities that we have to have for commercial cattlemen to make money go. We simply believe there's feed efficiency in every make and model, and we're going to be driving a Cadillac that's going to have a supercharged engine in it. Um, So we never had to get rid of any of those traits. Yes, we've pushed the envelope point where nobody else has, but we have to be careful. There's a lot of bulls I would have liked to have used because of their feed efficiency, but they weren't structurally sound or, or they couldn't create a profitable animal for our customers. Thanks, Jim. As always, next week we dive into where Lucky 7 Angus sources their genetics. And now that the warmer temps have reached just about everybody in cow country, I know some places are way too warm for this time of year and could sure use some of those spring showers Now is the time when we need to start thinking about those spring and summer breeding decisions, especially when it comes to those elite females. Transova Genetics, a leader in procuring those genetics. Emily Warnemont, the Director of Industry Relations with Transova Genetics, is with us. Emily, so good to have you back on the show. Now, those producers 
in the southeast Georgia specifically are going to be excited to hear that a new facility is coming their direction right quick. Yeah, we're super excited about the Georgia lab that we're opening um, early summer, hopefully June, depending on, you know, how construction goes and everything. But that's going to be in Lawrenceville, Georgia, um, not far from University of Georgia. So we're super excited to reach that part of the country that we've been a little slow in. How many different labs are there across the country? Where are they at? So we have roughly eight IVF labs that service the country. Within our system, we've got over 60 satellite regional centers um, where we actually do collections. So if you get um, your cows collected in Tennessee right now, all of those products or embryos and oocytes go to the Maryland lab. For anybody in the southeast region that gets work done with us, all their work will go through the Georgia lab. So um, we've got that sort of system going right now. We've got labs, Washington, California, Iowa, two in Texas, um, and Maryland. Emily, there has been a lot of importance and a lot of emphasis placed on biosecurity lately, and for good reason. And we're, we're talking about biosecurity of keeping animals healthy and productive to their ultimate capacity that they can be so if we are thinking of maybe working with Transova Genetics or bringing a donor female to one of those facilities or working with you in some capacity, maybe we don't even know what capacity yet, but we know that we want to increase the genetic intensity of our herds and we want to work with Transova Genetics or, like I said, find out the, the services that we that y'all offer, can we come to one of those locations? Can we take a tour? Can we meet the management? Can we see how those donor cows are taken care of. Can we see some of those biosecurity items that we talk about? Yeah, so any of our regional centers, we love having visitors come in and see what our what we do. Our team is very passionate about our industry and our mission. So um, if you call in and get on our schedule, we'd love to have you come in. Like you said, biosecurity is of concern where we have donors and recipients housed. So we just ask me a couple of questions of if you've been out of the United States within a certain amount of time. If you get out and go through cows, you know, we usually check on where you've been just so that we're not passing and anything along to those cows. Any of our satellite centers, yeah, I mean, you can come on collection day when you don't have anything scheduled and see how it works and runs. Anybody on our client service team would be happy to get that set up and let you know when the team's going to be there next. And we don't necessarily have to go take critters to one of those facilities. You will facilitate with us of how we can super ovulate those cows at home, how we could set up a, a potential lab for when Transova goes and maybe puts those eggs in that you will facilitate with us at home of, you know, trying to coordinate based on location, geographics, all those sorts of things. Yeah, definitely. So we help you every step of the way. If you've never flushed a cow or done an IVF procedure, our team will walk you through the whole process. Okay, what is the age of your cow breed? Has she ever been simulated before? What's her past history? And they'll come up with a schedule for your cow based on that. And basically that piece of paper that you get will say, okay, you're going to give this shot at this time with this dosage. And then the next day, this, this, and this, and then you bring her in at this time and we'll collect her. Like you said too, that's all at home. Um, If you want to do conventional flushing, we can do that right at the farm too. Um, If you schedule that out in advance, obviously we're coming up on spring breeding and everybody is all on the same page and that schedules book up quick. So that's something we ask that you call in advance about but then IVF procedures we like to have that at one of our sites just because we want it in a controlled environment any little tweak in the system um, really throws off our embryo production so we like to control that as much as possible however if you are going to run 15 cows through IVF we can come to your farm we would just set up some sort of IVF lab that would do for the day but um, again we want to make sure we get the best results for you so we kind of like that controlled environment just the season emily when a lot of high powered genetics are sold a lot of bulls obviously sold and a lot of those high powered females are sold so i'm assuming that it would behoove us maybe uh, before we make some of those investments or maybe if we're thinking of making those investments in the future to talk with you folks first of 
what would be the best environment, how to set us up for success. Yeah, definitely. I think that if you're going to go spend the money on a donor cow, and but you've never done any embryo work, definitely do your homework of what are the average results that you would get through any type of procedure, whether it's putting in embryos or making embryos. Ask for a price guide. Ask your Transova rep, can you walk through a best case scenario and what I would have to pay, just so there's not any surprises at the end because um, we want it to be a great experience for everybody and that you get the embryos made that you want. So um, even, you know, you're talking about bulls that you want to breed your cow, your donor cow to, is the semen available? How readily can you get it? And also, if you want to... Make sure your semen tank is charged, right? Make sure of that. Yeah. Can you get the semen to our lab? on the day that we're going to have to fertilize those oocytes when they come in. Also, another thing is do your homework on if you're going to want a desired sex of a calf and we're going to sort that semen for you, do your homework on does that bull sort well? And that's all things that we can talk you through if you call into our office. We have worked with many different individuals from Transova Genetics and they all, and I mean all of them, 100% have been top-notch professionals and we have had personal tremendous success. This is the biggest takeaway. If you have questions of any kind, reach out, especially what could this potential commitment to genetic improvement cost versus the return on investment, ROI. Any of the team across any one of their facilities will be more than happy to help you, even down to helping you establish if you are even ready to make this move or if there are a few management practices that need to be tweaked to get you to a point of the most potential of success. Emily, thanks so much for the time, and I look forward to hearing more updates, advice, practices, and tips from the crew at Transova Genetics. Can't forget the contact information. Where do you go? The best place to start? Jump online with information at transova.com. Market numbers, how high can they go? Kirk is on hold. We have the cattle market recap when we come back right here on the Ranch It Up Radio Show. The Tri-State Livestock News, what ranchers read. Stop by your local sale barn or livestock center and grab the latest issue of the Tri-State Livestock News. From the latest cattle market reports to various news stories within the ag industry, the Tri-State Livestock News covers it all. You can also check us out at tsln.com. And for those of you that might be interested in subscriptions or advertising, please give me a call, Tracy Hawk, at 406-951-3211. The Tri-State Livestock News, what ranchers read. Spring has sprung, and I know you have everything going through your mind from calving to spring planting. Are we going to get enough rain? Are we going to have enough hay? I understand this. But remember, it's not too late to add Allied Genetic Resources genetics into your bull battery. Now, spring may be here, but bull buying season is far from over. There's still lots of Allied sales one can attend. Make a difference and add Allied Genetic Resources to your program. You'll be glad you did. EquineMarket.com puts you in control of buying and selling horses of all breeds and disciplines. The easy-to-use online platform at EquineMarket.com offers private treaty sale, online auction, and live auction internet bidding. Horses never leave the farm until the buyer arrives, and because buyers connect directly with sellers, there's no middleman. Sell horses and hay on your terms today with EquineMarket.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Ranch It Up radio show. It's that time in the program when we check back in with Kirk Donsbach, Stonex Financial Incorporated. And uh, let me start it out that uh, step one, a lot of you have found us, of course, and this is step one to tune in each and every week for our commentary and what Kirk does a fine job at. Step two is texting the word cattle, C-A-T-T-L-E-2, 33777. That's going to get you on Kirk's newsletter list and uh, you send out that Kirk letter that Kirk letter that newsletter each and every week uh you know Sunday night Monday morning and you go a little bit more in depth into uh into the markets that's step two step three is uh, start to work on your marketing program if you don't know how to do that Kirk is the man you need to communicate with and he's going to get you set up and say here's where we need to start so Kirk with that uh welcome back I was good to have you what's going on with the numbers we had a very bullish cash week Tigger 
just to jump right into it, as of Friday, April 7th, April feeder futures were $2.80. That's actually down $0.12 cents from the previous Friday. Just a little note to our readers, back to when to get started on paying attention to markets and your hedging plan if you want to do that. The fall feeders are 225 to 228 so quite salty. The CME feeder index closed the week at 194.23. That's up $0.89. Cents. That leaves our basis at a negative $6.57. That is a little bit long in the tooth for a month that's in expiration. So either cash needs to continue higher to close that gap up or futures need to drift lower to, to close the gap. April live futures closed the week at 171.42.5. That's up $3.25. Of course, that bullish futures movement was based on cash trading 170 to 172 in the south and 173 to 177 in the north. That left our five area weighted average at $4.44 at 173.08. That's our second week in a row of cash movement between four and five dollars higher per week. Our basis was positive $2.05. That is not that unusual for a contract month in delivery, uh, defining the difference between feeders and live. Live is deliverable, so futures will often stay under that to avoid that delivery situation where feeders are not deliverable. And so you have the different basis situation. Weekly slaughter was 603,000. That was down 48,000 from the previous week and 62,000 from that same week the previous year. It was a holiday shortened week this week and it was not last year. So don't put a lot of value into those slaughter numbers. Choice boxes closed the week up $8.91 at 290.98. So we're again scratching that 290 level. To wrap this up, December corn closed the week. At five dollars and fifty six cents, that's down ten and a quarter on the week. And Kirk, I would imagine when you're talking with uh, clients or or prospective clients, and you're visiting about the markets, and they're saying this and that, I would imagine probably one of the first questions that you will come to is break even. Do we know what our break even is? Because even though when we're watching these sale barn reports and what feeders and fats are going for, and we're all excited about that. Um, the big question is how many of us really know if that is true, getting excited for our operation? So is that kind of almost always the number one question that you'll visit with? It's absolutely the starting point, Tigger. Uh, a couple baseline rules. We don't want to add hedging costs to an animal or a already losing money, and we don't want to hedge a loss. So absolutely the number one starting point is what is our break even. And then unfortunately, you always have to be flexible. Um, as we're finding out here in Montana, Paul and Hayen from, from Minnesota that I did not plan on, our break-evens are also open to change. So are you saying that that's your, that is your uh, specific situation, if I can throw you under the bus? It is indeed. Unfortunately, I'm getting to meet truckers from Minnesota uh, this spring, and I'm definitely not alone. I, th I think everybody in my area any, anyway is in the same situation. So you are uh, are you are hoping that uh, we go into spring like we did last year, not with the devastation, but you're saying, okay, we need a little bit more moisture because uh, we need more feed out here. I would definitely take some sunshine and more moisture in the form of rain. I do not need to see any more of the white stuff. I'm with you there, brother. Amen. The world-famous Mile City Buck and Horse Sale is coming up fast, and I mean fast. So make plans to join us in Mile City, Montana. Here is John Morford, the president of the Board of Governors for the Bucking Horse Sale, with this update. Well, I always like to remind people that the month of May here is big in, in this country. We'll race horses on May 6th and 7th and on the 14th, well before the Buck and Horse Sale even starts. So it's all paramutual horse racing. And, and then we'll go right into the four days of the Buck and Horse Sale after that. Probably one of our biggest days of our sale is Sunday when we have the PRCA match bronc ride. We'll have 32 of the best cowboys in the world here. And uh, we had all the rights here last year. We had of the top 15 in the world, we had 14 of them here. So we're looking for the same this year. There's over $50,000 added to our match bronc ride. It's one of the biggest match bronc rides in the world. And I guess I might mention we're expanding our Friday night. We have a PRCA bronc riding permit challenge on Friday night. That went over so well last year. We were expanding that. We're going to have 50 of those guys here. The Wild Horse Race is always a big event here. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. For 2023, the Wild Horse Race is going to be one of the richest ones in the world. There's uh, there's over $18,000 available. Lots of big-time teams coming out of New Mexico and Arizona and Colorado. 
It's going to be exciting. The world-famous Mile City Buck and Horse Sale kicks off May 6th and 7th with derby races, and then May 14th on Mother's Day. Mother's Day races going on all day. And then the next weekend, on Thursday evening, is when we're having the kickoff concert featuring Mitchell Tenpenny. Friday is where all the action starts on May 19th. It's the first day of events and runs all the way through Sunday. For more information and a full schedule and for tickets, just go to buckinghorsesale.com. We're going to have more information coming up next week about the history of the Bucking Horse Sale. So, John, I appreciate it and looking forward to bringing you back on the show next week. I tip my hat to you from one legend to another. Now, before we say fairly well, we want to give a big tip of the hat, and this is going to go out to, well, all of you again out there that are fighting the elements. This has been a spring, I mean, for the record books, because some of you are not getting a lick of moisture to save your skin, and then other people are dealing with floods and uh, the snow melt that has been so rapid and so quick. So environmentally, this is a tough one. So just know thoughts and prayers are with all of you out there. And now that's going to wrap it for today. A big thanks from our crew to yours, Jim Jensen with Lucky 7 Angus, Marty Ropp with Allied Genetic Resources, Emily Warnemont with Transova Genetics, Kirk Donsbach, Stonex Financial Incorporated, and John Morford with the world famous Mile City Buck and Horse Sale. A big thank you goes out to our partners, and this is quite a list, an awful lot Darn proud of them. The DLCC Ranch, the world famous Mile City Buck and Horse Sale, Farmatan, and I'm a Gene Ingredients, the Tri State Livestock News, the Farmer and Rancher Exchange, and the Fence Post, Westway Feed Products, Allied Genetic Resources, Livestock Market, Equine Market, and AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, the Cowboy Channel, and Wrangler. And crew, so glad y'all came with us one more time as we ranch it up. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook at Ranch It Up Show. We have multiple updates there each and every week. Our email, ranchitupshow at gmail.com, and you can call and text us 24 7 at 707 Ranch 20. That's 707 726 2420. Spread the good word and join us again next week where it's always Tigger approved. Stay ranchy and ranch it up.